Okay, so I'm gonna put up a Martin box, and I make all my Martin boxes horizontal out from the tree, and I'll explain to that why I do that as I go here. The uh, I have a bandsaw sawmill, so I have an advantage over a lot of guys. I can cut my own wood, but my boxes are pieces are 18 inches long, seven inches by eight inches is what I try to cut. So to put in a set. I like to go in prepared. I can make a set in minutes. A nice chunk of bait, an axe, my hammer, and I'm good to go here. So I'm going to pick a tree. So I'm going to use this tree here for my bait, or for my box. I've already pre-dilled some holes in my box so I can put it up. I like to make it roughly chest height. I generally try to pick a tree that's not quite as wide as my box yet because the boxes will stay in play for a number of years. Two nails. I don't drive them in all the way because sometimes a bear will come along and knock your box down. So if you drive them in solid like that, then it, usually they've smashed the bottom of your box off. So by putting them in loose, pre-drilling the hole so that it's not tight to the box, it usually saves the box and he just knocks the box right down. Nice chunk of bait, I always like a fist sized chunk of bait, right in the back of the box. Trap out in front here. What I want to be able to do is come up to my set, when I have a catch and quickly change it. The other thing I want is a swivel action in there so when the animal gets caught he swivels. And I want him hanging away from the tree. I don't want him to touch the tree or I don't want him to touch the ground. This is my ultimate favorite trap. A lot of guys don't like them because they think they're overpowered. But for catching Martin and Fisher, I really really like this trap. I always put dog to the back of the box, trigger on the bottom. Kind of lock the trap in place. Once I have it done like this, the last thing I want to do is try to prevent catching non-targets. I don't want to catch weasels and I don't want to catch squirrels. So I try to completely block the front of my box with boughs so that the, the uh, animals can't really see in. In the fall time, if I'm trapping a lot earlier in the year, I find the Martin like to run on the ground a lot more. So what I found was to put in a running pole. The running pole goes in a specific spot. I put it on the back of the set towards the pole. I used to put it right here, and the Martin would run so fast up the pole and get caught that he would get caught by the hips, so it was a bad catch. So I learned to put it on the back. It just has a little enticer again. I'll take it and I'll rub some meat on the pole. It doesn't work as good when it's minus 10 out like it is today, but when it's a bit warmer, you get some blood and some fat on the pole and it just gives them something better to sniff along.
I do this again because the Martin, it doesn't bother the Martin or the Fisher, but it does help slow down on catching non-targets. Again, the last thing I want to do is I want to add some call lure to it. Call lure is to broadcast the, the, uh, the sets here. So you've seen earlier where the wolves are checking out some of my sets, it's because they were smelling my call lure. I generally put it above and behind the set. And pretty well every time I come out, depending on how cold it is, I'll refresh in the lure. Big problem in the winter time is putting down your tools and losing them in the snow. One of the ways I combat that is I look for, in this case, an orange hammer and I paint my equipment fluorescent orange so that when I drop it in the snow, if it shows up at all, any of it, you can tell where it is pretty fast. So I do that with my trap setters. This one's getting ready for another coat. Probably do that in the spring here. But if I happen to drop it in the snow, when you're, when you're looking around for it, you can tell right away it's not a stick because it's got the orange on it. So it's a really good tip. I paint my ice pick that color, my axes, anything that I want to not lose. And unfortunately, sometimes you can't find it that year when you go back in the fall and that fluorescent orange tool stands right out and you can grab it. I've done that too. Tip of the day by Jim Gibb. Okay, this Martin is pretty pale. It's not like the chocolate brown color that we all like to catch. It's worth less money because what happens with it most times is it's going to be dyed a darker color. So when you catch pale Martin, don't be totally discouraged. It's worth a few bucks less than a chocolate brown one that we all like to catch. But pails, because they have to be dyed, the buyer's going to pay a little bit less money for them. That's about Martin and there's, there's probably five different, easily five different shades that they'll come in. You get dark brown, brown, pale, uh, a light pale and extra pale so you'll you, there's quite a few uh, color uh, spectrum across the the board and uh when you get towards the end when you get pale and extra pale then it's worth a few bucks less than a than a brown or, or a dark brown so part of my martin video i want to show you guys how to make a martin box um i said in the video my pieces are 18 inches long but in fact i have one piece that's 12 inches so i have three pieces that are 18 inches long and one piece that's 12 inches long and then I put a fence clip one of these in the front to anchor it and I put it in the center for a specific reason because sometimes the chains on this side or the wires on this side and sometimes the wires on that side plus I want the extra height that I can get because when I, my animal gets caught and he comes out of the box I want him to be hanging away from the tree and free of the ground two important things if you're worried about mouse chewings or, or squirrels chewing on your on your catch this is one way to avoid it is to make sure that the trap hangs away from the tree and clear the ground so well, I'm going to quickly make a, a Martin box here for you okay so one of the things I like to use is a pilot bit like this to free drill my holes it stops the wood from splitting on me so just a little trick I learned that from my, my buddy Dave Green he used one of these little bits all the time and it works really good. So I'm going to quickly drill the holes in it and then I'll start screwing it. Now another little tip that I do is I flare out the outsides a little bit and the reason for that is because as the tree grows that I put it on it starts to force the box close so I started off by being a little bit narrower. A tree grows about a quarter inch a year so after five or six years it starts to, to flare it in and push the front of my box in so that's why I flare it out at the edges here a little bit. Once I have that drilled I flip it over, I put my bottom piece on I usually always use a piece of wood like that to line it up so it's straight.
Okay, I'm almost finished my box. So the idea of the box goes up against the tree like this and it's good to go. The last thing I like to do here is put in a piece of a fence clip like this. And again, I like to pre-drill the holes a little bit. Right in the center. Perfectly like that, and then I like to add on a quick change link so I can quickly change my trap out. Now the last thing I would do with this box, two last things I would do with this box, is I would I would chainsaw in the uh, cuts that I want to have to put my traps in. And usually what I do is I'll get six or seven boxes at a time and I'll take my chainsaw and I'll make my cuts really fast like that. I like my cuts to be narrow. I want my trap to be snug in there. I don't want it to be floppy. The reason I pre-drill the holes like this is that when I put it up against a tree and it's really cold out on a minus 20 day, I can hit it with a hammer sometimes and split my wood. So by pre-drilling some, some pilot holes, I just stick a nail in it. The other reason is... When it's up against a tree, sometimes a barrel will come along and it'll hit your box. With the holes loose like that, it tends to let the, the box fall out of the tree and not wreck it. If you put it too solid, they'll rip. They'll usually rip the bottom board right off the off the uh, the box, and then your box is uh, no good. So, 2001-5 is my favorite trap. Not everybody likes them. They say they're too powerful, but I, I really like them for especially catching uh, fisher. One thing I really try to be careful with is to make sure it has a swivel action. In this case, it has actually a double swivel action. The other thing I like to do, the dog always goes trigger at the bottom, dog goes in the back of the trap. And I have a quick connect here. Quickly to change out. <laughs> so I'm ready to go. So that box is ready to install. Usually I get anywhere on average four to five years out of a box, sometimes 10 years out of a box. Depends if they come and clear cut on me or if the tree grows so much that it actually splits the box. And I have an example. Last time I was on my run, I took out took this box down because you can see how the back has been really flared out by a the, by the tree growth that would have been that would have been started out basically like this one right here and you can see how much it's flared out here the box is still good I brought it back in I'll, I'll do a kind of a slight repair on it and I'll put it right back out so that's my Martin box the reason I like this box so much is because it works from the day I set it until the day I pick it up. If you notice, my trap is recessed inside of the box. So if you have inclement weather, freezing rain or a big snowstorm, the, the snow will build up here, the ice will build up there, but it won't affect my trap. My trap is inside, ready to go. When the trap fires, it's gonna hang on the front of the box like this. So this catch is suspended. It's a killing type trap, it's suspended. I'm not gonna have to worry about birds, mice, voles, whatever, chewing on my, on my catch and damaging my fur. Hard enough to catch them, we wanna make sure we produce a perfect pelt. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in our next video.